it's me, Kelly Tinnen. You know the drill. I'm with Kelly Tinnen and Associates, a performance improvement company located in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but we work all over the country. So I've been talking about human-centered leadership this past month, and I want to round out the month talking about mental models. Peter Senge talks about this in his book, The Fifth Discipline. He defines mental models as ingrained assumptions. So really, I mean, bias in a way, generalizations that influence how we see the world. And so a lot of this can be our own bias, confirmation bias, things that confirm how we see the world and perceive things. So how can old mental models kind of get in the way or be roadblocks in terms of how we move forward with our teams, how we iterate and innovate with our teams, how we build trust with our teams. Now, I'm not implying that old ways of doing things, I'm not implying that they're bad, but we're living in an age of disruption where things are constantly changing. Almost daily things are changing. It's exhausting to think about how fast and quickly things change. And therefore, is your team thinking creatively in a way to foster new ideas? Or are we just kind of stuck in the old mental model and we're just kind of plugging along on the road, not really thinking outside the box? And so I wanna talk about a little bit about how to promote different ways of thinking on your team. So think about those innovators that were crazy, not literally crazy, let me rephrase that. Think about those innovators that were told that they were crazy when they uh, first proposed their idea. A couple for me that come to mind are Airbnb and Uber, or like Uber and Lyft. So Airbnb and Uber, like let's put strangers in our homes, let's put strangers in our cars or get in a stranger's car and have them drive us to our destination. So if this would have been proposed, let's say in 1980, the year that I was born, I think people would have looked at them like they had two heads, which even when these companies were developed, people looked at them like they had two heads. But these ideas have since really taken off. In fact, I am um, visiting Washington DC for a few days uh, for a conference, and I've taken Uber myself many times around the city. And so it's funny how how our perceptions have changed. And it's interesting to see like how these companies challenge some old mental models and therefore created new opportunities and really kind of a new niche within an industry. But think about businesses that are no longer around because they were afraid to challenge the status quo and afraid to challenge those mental models and different ways of thinking. The not really the film industry per se, but the movie industry per se is a huge one. Think about um, when we used to go to the video store on Friday nights, or I used to do that. That was a big thing that was like really fun to do when I was in school and we'd get our movies for the weekend. We don't do that anymore. We stream and, and binge watch and I have a million apps on my TV. In fact, I had to get rid of a couple of apps on my TV because I was just overloaded with television. Think about our phones and the fact that we carry computers in our pockets and I can essentially do all of my banking and everything under the sun from my cell phone. So think about that. So what if these companies weren't open to different ideas and thinking and innovation? So some food for thought there in terms of challenging mental models. Don't be afraid to be curious. Being curious, I think, sparks new ideas. And fostering curiosity along with trust in a psychologically safe environment, I think can really transform into great ideas. And not being afraid to try things that people have not tried before or to test the waters and to test things that people haven't tried before. To really build this culture of continuous learning, continuous iteration, continuous for lack of a better term, trial and error. Um, You may fail at one thing, but how can we make that process better to make version 2.0 even better than before? So definitely some things to think about when it comes to leading from a human-centered perspective. And so with that, I'm signing off today. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Share them with us in the comments. Don't forget to follow us on social media, subscribe to our channel, and visit us on the web. We'll talk to you soon.